When it was revealed in 2015 that Rachel Dolezal, who at the time was president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Spokane chapter, was a white woman pretending to be black, it became news all around the world. Dola Self herself says she is not white because she identifies as a transracial black woman and argues that she has done a lot of good for the community through her work as an activist and educator. However, it is important to recognize that she received benefits in the form of employment and financial compensation based on her blackness, thus taking these opportunities away from actual black women. This is not the first time people have appropriated cultures and identities for personal gain. In 2015, it was revealed that Vijay Chokakalingam, brother to actress and producer Mindy Kaling, pretended to be black in his medical school applications to benefit from affirmative actions intended to support black and indigenous students. Many people have no problem identifying with black people when it benefits them. In 2020, American professor of African and Latin studies, Jessica Krug, admitted to faking her black heritage, Ashmalesh 2020. In these cases, the racial appropriation achieved by physically changing one's appearance led to the co-opting of resources, positions, and profits meant for black people. Now, it's one thing to be delusional enough to say that you identify as being black. But it's quite another when you take away opportunities and resources that are designated for black people because of the atrocities that have been done to black people in this country. That's quite another. In the late 1920s, there was a radio sitcom that began called Amos and Andy. There was two white actors in blackface depicting black people in a very derogatory manner. Many people thought it was funny and many thought it was appalling. While the show had a brief life in the 1950s television with black actors, the 1928 to 1960s radio show was created, written and voiced by two white actors. In the early 1950s, the radio show became a television production using black actors, but the stereotypes and the derogatory nature of the show remained. The show was later canceled and it ran in syndication until 1966. The Cambridge Dictionary defies cultural appropriation as the act of taking or using things from a culture that is not your own especially without showing that you understand or respect this culture. There are three main elements that need to be highlighted here. First, this definition implies that the appropriator is not part of the group to which the cultural elements itself belongs. Second, this concept implies the act of taking or using cultural elements, meaning that whoever is engaging in this process can engage with the culture on their own term, thus indicating that power dynamics are at play. Third, and perhaps most importantly, the cultural element is taken out of its context in a way that either does not credit its origins or is disrespectful to its meaning. The term culture vulture has been a popular subject of debate within the black community. Most black people define being a culture vulture as when an individual outside of the black community finds interest or fascination in parts of black culture and tries to make it their own. Being a culture vulture and appropriating culture are synonymous concepts that date back into the 19th century. In its earliest form, being a culture vulture often meant that white people would dress up in blackface or perform racist vaudeville routines. Acts such as these have forever impacted the black community as a whole. This controversy sparked outrage in some of the most well-known black historical figures, such as Frederick Douglass. After witnessing a blackface performance, he penned his opinion in a North Star newspaper. The filthy scum of white society who have stolen from us a complexion denied to them by nature 
in which to make money and pander to the corrupt taste of their white fellow citizens, Douglas said. For non-black people, it is easy to paint your face a darker color and wear a black hairstyle and still get away with it. They make someone else's complexion, figures, and hairstyle a trend, while white people force black people to live with the consequences. On social media, this may seem like simple admiration of black people and the culture, but in reality, it exploits and mocks the culture for their own social or financial benefit. These acts of appropriation occur in media, music, and today's fashion. So you see, this phenomena of white people appropriating black culture is nothing new. In fact, it goes back centuries. Have you ever heard of Pat Boone? Well, Pat Boone was a singer in the 50s who got famous by covering Little Richard songs, Tutti Frutti, Oh Rudy, Good Golly, Miss Molly, and also he covered Fats Domino, Ain't That a Shame, and other songs. And he actually sold more copies than they did. But yes, he never gave them credit until years later. And I know many of us remember Elvis Presley. Well, to see Elvis Presley was to see a carbon copy of the great Jackie Wilson, Mr. Excitement himself. And make no mistake about it, black people created rock and roll, along with jazz, R&B, gospel, blues, all of the music that we listen to today have all been created by black people. Can you say the Osmond Brothers? Well, prior to 1969, when the Jackson 5 came on the scene singing songs like I Want You Back, Stop the Love You Save, and ABC, the Osmond Brothers was a noted quartet-type singing group. They sang barbershop quartet-type music. Only after the Jackson 5 came on the scene did they come out with a song called One Bad Apple with Donny Osmond trying to sing like Michael Jackson. Can you say stop biting? And of course, we all know that hip hop and rap, the most recent genre and now the most popular genre of music in all of the world, that was started by black people in the Bronx. Now, I know we have people like Fat Joe and others try to say that, you know, other nations, other people were a part of the hip hop. But the hip hop was started by black people. Make no mistake about it. People like Curtis Blow, the Sugar Hill Gang. Run DMC. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. All those black artists started hip-hop others have appropriated in recent years and of course they're trying to take the credit from us but no it was started by black people and it's not in just the entertainment field in the area of inventions do you know how many inventions were stolen from black people we know that Lattimore invented the the uh, filament that allowed the light bulb to work and he barely got credit for that but there were so many other inventions that were stolen from black people. Inventions like the mailbox, the traffic light, the automatic gear shift, the clothes dryer, the automatic elevator doors, the folding chairs, the gas heating furnace, and so many, many more inventions, many of which were stolen from black people and black people never got the credit for these inventions. Yes, this is our culture. A culture of innovations, creations, and inventions. Black people have been creating in this country for over 300 years. And the first patent that was ever granted in this country to a black person was Thomas L. Jennings for his invention of the dry cleaning mechanism in the year 1821. And just for clarity, all of the inventions listed were not necessarily stolen from black people. However, far too many inventions were in fact stolen from black inventors.
You know, not bad for a people who were told we had no history or we had no culture. But you can't turn on the TV without seeing the influence of black culture everywhere. Everybody wants to be and act like us. You know, historically, we've been made to feel bad about the complexion of our skin. People try to make us feel embarrassed or ashamed in order to try and tone down our shine. But somehow, as we're shrinking ourselves to try and fit in with them, they are taking everything that we're, we're willing to give away and repurpose it. And now it's becoming the new thing. Orange is the new black or white is the new black. No, black is the new black. No one ever says anything about the tanning beds, the collagen injections, the BBLs, the injections for the butt lifts. Everybody's doing the boxer braids now. And this ain't nothing but cornrows. And we all know that. And this has been in our culture for thousands of years. You find so many people want to emulate us until it comes to the struggle. When it comes to the struggle, we're on our own. That's when the line is drawn. That's when everyone takes off their makeup. And that's when being black is not cool. And I must admit it, a lot of it is our fault. Because we don't gatekeep our culture. We don't gatekeep to, the, to our detriment. Others come in and they assimilate and they monetize our creativity and then they sell it back to us. We have to stop this. Truth be told, we are the algorithms. We are what's trending. We are the next big thing and we're the last big thing. We're the one that drives all the trends. We need to realize it and we need to monetize for ourselves. And we need to protect and gatekeep our own culture. But if the truth be told, we're the only race of people that has bought into this multiculturalism. I don't see any other race, including us, when it comes to their culture. We're not included in Chinatown. We're not included in Germantown. We're not included in Little Italy. And I can go on and on and on. And if I'm wrong, someone please correct me in the comments. Show me where others have included us the way we include everyone else. And just like everyone else, when it comes to our culture, we need to be the gatekeepers of our culture. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, thou art rich.